Good morning, my friends. We are so glad to be together as a church family this morning. I'm standing here with rising first graders and rising sixth graders and their families. What a great view this morning. It's good to see all of you. We're glad to be together. Today, I just want to share with you, we call today Promotion Sunday, but it's also Bible Sunday. Because of your generosity, we are gifting every first grader with a Gospel Project Bible. This Bible has pictures and the scripture verses that are the same version as what we're studying in class. And then our fifth graders headed to sixth grade have a study Bible. And Trevor encourages them, it's time to dig into God's Word and use this Bible at home with your daily devotions. And you may have heard him share before, his dad gave him a study Bible, the exact same version when he moved into sixth grade. So we're putting the Word of God, because of your generosity, into the hands of our kids. I want to thank you so very much for your support of them, and I want to encourage you to continue to pray for them. We're calling our kids to live out Psalm 119, 105, that God's word is a lamp and a light to their path. The world wants to light their path. The world wants to provide a different lamp. And I ask you to pray for these parents and as they raise their kids and they teach them about God. I thank you so much for those of you who are praying daily. I have Brenda Brown who emailed me this week and said, how can I pray for kids ministry? Monty Parnell is just a text away when there's a family talking to their child about salvation. I text Monty and say, would you please pray for this family? And my dear friend Trevor, as the mom of a teenager, it does my heart good to know he has seven note cards that have a day of the week on every note card. And every student in student ministry, that child's name is on that card. And I know that on Wednesday, Trevor's praying for Riley Halstead. And I want you to know that every day of the week, he is coming before God in prayer for your teenagers. And I would ask you to do the same. Just as you see a family or see a kid, say a prayer for them. My parting words to these fifth graders, other than I will miss you and don't forget who I am. And, you know, when you go upstairs, you're in the big league. But remember, Miss Kim, my parting words to them this year was, your church is here for you. And before you Google something or you ask a random group of kids something, come to the people in your church. If there's something you don't feel comfortable talking to your mom or dad about, we are here for you. There are grow group leaders and grandparents and people who have done life together. And, and more than ever, I just know that our church is here as we live life together. So thank you for that. Please continue to pray for these families. Kids, I'm excited about what's coming your way, whether you're a first grader or a fifth grader. And as we end this time this morning, I just want to ask Trevor to pray over us. And I want to encourage you, pray for these families, pray for these kids, that they would become disciples of Jesus. Before I pray, I have a charge for you, church, as well. Uh, you may not know this, but Cross Point ha Student Ministry has a vision statement. And so our, our vision is that Cross Point Student Ministry will be a gospel-driven community. So that means we're not event-driven, we're gospel-driven. And some people have accused me before of being too deep for students. And my philosophy has always been I want to hold a crown above their heads and, and help them grow into it. And so we're, we're gospel-driven, and we don't water that down. But we're a gospel-driven community that seeks to champion the church and the family as we disciple students into uh, the relationship that Jesus died for them to live. What that means is that we want to equip parents. We want to partner with parents. We believe that parents are the primary discipler of, of their children, of their students. And so we want to be your, your biggest fans. We want to be in your corner and we want to help you and partner with you as you disciple your, your students. Uh, what it means that we, we want to champion the church I don't know if you realize this or not, but about 75% of, of kids that grow up in the church, when they move off to college, 75% uh, of them quit going to church for their young adult years. And that breaks my heart. And so we want to champion the church because we never want Cross Point Student Ministry to feel like a silo. We never want it to feel like a separate ministry from what's happening in the life and the body of, of this church. And so that's why it does my heart so good to see students playing the drums on this worship team on this stage and students back there in that sound booth 
and students volunteering at VBS, we want, we want them to know they're a part of this body. And so here's my charge to you. Would you treat them like brothers and sisters in Christ? They're a part of this body with you. So treat them, love them, and treat them like brothers and sisters in Christ and lift them into the light of the Lord through prayer. Let's do that right now. Heavenly Father, we love you, and we thank you so much for your love for us. God, thank you for these, these families on the stage this morning. Thank you uh, for Kim and what she means to this church, what she means to each one of these families on this stage. God, I thank you for all the people that are a part of the teams that help these students and help these kids as they, as they grow closer to you, God. Father, I just pray that you continue to bond this church together. God, I pray for unity. And I pray, Lord, that in everything we say and do, that we would honor and glorify you. And I pray that you would be, be praised this morning through the worship that's going to come off of our lips. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Walking on stage, would you stand and sing with us? We're singing the house of the Lord. We worship the God who was. Here we go. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors and he cried in the raging sea. My God, He holds a victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. And our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God in heels. God who heals, we sing to the God who saves, we sing to the God who always makes a way. He hung up on that cross, and he rose up from that grave, and my God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord. My God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Cause we were the beggars, but now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, but now we're running free. We are forgiven. Accept him, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Sing again, we were the beggars. Cause we were the beggars. But now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. But now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. Let the There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord, and our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord, and our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out your praise. So, oh, oh, oh. We shout out your praise. Amen. 
we're so glad you're here. Would you have a seat and turn your attention to the baptistry? Good morning, Cross Point. How are y'all doing this morning? Well, my name is Wes Jacobs. A lot of y'all have seen me up there discussing our, uh, our finances, but it's my first time uh, in these waters, and I couldn't be happier to introduce you to my daughter, Lily Jacobs. Um, it's a big day. Today is her 10th birthday, and it's her baptismum day. So can everybody say happy birthday, Lily? Yeah. All right. So earlier this summer at uh, Connect Camp, uh, Lily accepted Christ, and she spoke with me and her, uh, her mother, Megan, and Miss Kim, and we all feel confident that she knows the decision that she's making. So Lily, uh, we're here in front of our church family today, and uh, have you uh, admitted that you were a sinner and that your only way to be saved was through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Yes, sir. All right, we'll step down for me. All right, then I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Every day. 
How good is he if he never did another thing for me? He's all I'll ever need. And how good is he if he never did another thing for me? He's all I'll ever need. It's how good is he? A thousand times. A thousand times I failed to see your mercy remains. I should have stumbled up again. And now I'm caught in your embrace. Everlasting, your light will shine when you know your strength. Never ending, your glory. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace. To love you from the inside out.
before you. We just worship you. We cry out. Consume us, Lord. As a deer pants for the water, Lord. So our soul thirsts for you. Give us a fire. We love you. Speak through Michael. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning. It's good to see everybody here on the last Sunday in July, and um, welcome. If I've not had a chance to meet you, I hope that it'll happen before the day is over. But my name is Michael, and I get the privilege of serving on the team here in the capacity of uh, lead pastor, and so we're glad that you're here uh, this morning. If you are a new with us, whether you're new here on, in the room with us today or you're new worshiping with us online, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. In the seat back in front of you, you'll see uh, a card. It's a connection card. If you are new with us today, we want to get to know you. We are honored that you come this way, and we really like to get to know people and their stories. And so if you're new with us, if you would take that card, and over the next several minutes as I'm sharing, if you would just fill that out, and then at the end of the message, before we go into our last song today, for our regulars, you're a little off kilter because we didn't pass buckets, and you're trying to figure out what's going on. It, don't, don't worry. There's a plan. Uh, I'm going to ask you to use these connection cards in multiple op points throughout the message today And so we decided it's easier to catch it all at the end than to ask you to do something different with it All right, and so uh, so those of you that are itching to put your offering in the bucket. It's coming. All right <clears throat> For those of them are itching. Um, we'll see <laughs> Hey a year ago we had a conversation uh, as a church, right? Uh, I've been here just over a year now and uh, really feel like I've been here a lot longer than that, not because it's hard, right, but because of how easy it is living in Perry and being a part of Cross Point and just the depth of the relationships that God has given us. But a year ago, we had this conversation of, what do we do? You know, coming, coming out of COVID, coming out of interim, coming out of all this, what do we do? And I don't know if you remember, I, I stood right here and told you, we don't have a clue. And um, so we were going to try a few things for five months. Anybody remember that conversation? We were going to try a few things, right? And if you don't remember that conversation, it's okay. So here we are a year later, and where are we at in, in all of this? And so I want to I say, first of all, I want to say thank you to Jesus for my salvation. I want to say thank you to God for leading me and my family to Perry and to Cross Point. And Cross Point, I want to say to you, thank you for your generosity and your graciousness with a new pastor, uh, allowing me to, you know, flesh out my knuckleheadedness. And you just loved me. And uh, I really, really, really uh, am grateful. I love being in Perry, and I love being at Cross Point. So, if you have your Bibles, turn over to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. And as you're turning there, let me just, let's talk about, let's just kind of celebrate the last year. This morning, that's really what we want to do. We've been celebrating the goodness of God already this morning. 
in ministry. We've been celebrating in baptism and representing life change. And so let's just celebrate as you make your way to Acts chapter 2. In the, we would say the old scorecard for church is that church was measured by the three B's. Bodies, buildings, and budgets, right? Do we have more bodies or bottoms in the seats in those buildings than, you did, than we did previously? And, you know, are we paying the bills? That's really kind of the old scorecard when it comes to, to churches. Uh, here's what we want to say. There ought to be a new scorecard, right? And really, it, it's not new. It's just bringing forward what Jesus really told us ought to be. Here's how we, we need to measure success in the life of a church. Are we seeing life transformation? I mean, that's really what it boils down to. There's a lot we can do, and you can kind of get caught in going through the motions and this kind of deal, but the reality is, are we seeing life transformation? Are we seeing men, women, boys, and girls come to saving faith in Jesus Christ? Are we seeing marriages strengthened? Are we seeing relationships helped? Are we seeing a community changed from the inside out? I mean, does Perry and the greater area of Perry, does it make a difference that Cross Point even exists? I mean, if for some reason tomorrow Crosspoint ceased to exist, what impact would that have on our community? We want to see life transformation. And so uh, we measure those things, right? We ask questions. How many people are coming to church? About this time a year ago, uh, between what was in this room and what was in kids' ministry, uh, we had about 275 people on a Sunday morning. There's over 300 of you in this room this morning and another 80 to 90 in kids' ministry. So... Uh, in the past year, we've now seen us move to more than 400 on a Sunday morning, right? And so let me, all glory to God, yep. I, I mentioned that to say this, we want to continue to make room, right? And so you walk into a room like this that's about 70 plus percent filled in terms of seating capacity. Here's what I'm going to ask. If, if, if Cross Point is your place, all right, so if you're new to Cross Point, you can check out for a for a week or two, all right, and then you come back to this one. But if, if Cross Point is your church, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you on a regular basis to walk further forward to find a seat, right? And then I'm going to ask you to use the, the SOS method. We need to scoot over some um, <laughs> so that our, our, our ushers can help easily find those seat spots because we want to make it as easy and as, as the, the least complicated for, for everybody, regardless of whether you're new to Cross Point or not, you know, you just got caught in the hallway talking and here you go, whatever, okay? So if, if an usher walks by your row one Sunday and asks you to scoot over, the response should be this, absolutely, and move over, right? Any response other than that is unacceptable. And so we'll just, <laughs> we'll just we'll keep making room and keep making space, all right? So... Um, Felt like I needed to say, hey, in the last year, we've seen, including this morning, 19 baptisms, 19 times in the past 12 months that we've had the privilege to be able to, to, to baptize, to represent someone who has trusted Jesus and is coming to faith. <laughs> this summer, you've been responsible as a church for more than 250 kids and students being in some kind of camp between Bible school, student camp, kids ministry camp, and the FCA Power Camp, more than 250 kids and students um, have, have been in camp this week. Oh, excuse me, this week. <laughs> Lord, help us. That's the kind of summer it's been um, in, in, in this summer. And so we praise God for that. In the last year, not only have you fully funded a budget last year and fully funding a budget this year, but you paid off in 16 months $1.3 million of debt to be debt-free as of May of this year. We, we really believe Cross Point should be a place where everybody's welcome and everybody fits in belong. And so we want to, you know, we, we, we multi-generational, uh, and so we want to live and function like that. But we also know that we create environments for kids and for students and for adults uh, of all kinds. And so some new ministries. Uh, at, our 55-plus ministry is not so much new as it is a renewed ministry and the outings and the opportunities of the ministry that's happened there. Our Wednesday church, the third, mm-mm. The second Wednesday of every month, 9.30 is breakfast in here, followed by uh, 10 o'clock, uh, a worship service uh, that we just call Wednesday Church. And uh, our team leads that, and it's a, it, we use hymns. We just sing traditional hymns on that day, which t takes me back into my childhood days and the songs that I sing in the shower and driving down the road. And, um, but anyhow, so Wednesday Church, midweek, um, 
in, in the past year, uh, church, because of your generosity and giving, we've been able to increase and, and put more into local uh, missions, local ministry outreach. I'm going to talk more about it uh, in, later in the day, but I, uh, in the morning, but I spent time this week with our church planters, with J.D. Mangrum and his team in Boston, and I've got some really cool things to tell you what God's going to allow us to do. But here's the thing, because of your, incre- because of your faithfulness in giving, we're able to increase our monthly support that's going to our church planter and when I went this week I was able to take them a check to make up the difference of that backdated from January through July and so they had a project you know this our church plant was gifted a building a four million dollar piece of property now that's not always a blessing right because a building that was built in the 1800s in Boston can have a lot of other challenges to it but uh, so when I was there this week they, they, they got a new sign going in out front and so when uh, J.D. looked at me and with tears in his eyes, he goes, this will finish paying for the new sign so that as the community walks by, they know who we are. So because of your faithfulness there, <clears throat> there it happens. Last uh, fall, you wrote more than 600 cards to school employees in Perry, um, delivered gift baskets to doctors, fire, EMS, police, food to all these places, more than 200 backpacks last year and this year to uh, the mountains of Appalachia. North Point Christian Counseling was launched here at the end of April. They started with one day a week. They moved to two days a week within a month. And this fall, North Point Christian Counseling will add a third day of seeing and ministering right here off of the campus of Cross Point. That happened because of the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God's people. And so this new scorecard, you say, Michael, those are still built bodies, buildings, and budgets. What are you talking about? This new scorecard, here's the question we have to ask. How does all of that reflect life change? Why should all of that be important? Look with me in the scriptures, Acts chapter 2, beginning of verse 42. Here's a snapshot into the, the, a, week, a day in the life of the early church. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship and the breaking of bread and to prayer. And everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and signs were being performed through the apostles. Now all the believers were together and held all things in common, so they sold their possessions and property and distributed the proceeds to all as any had need. And every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple and broke bread from house to house. And they ate their food with joyful and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. God in heaven... Give us humble, grateful hearts for your goodness and your grace to us. And Father, give us passionate hearts to follow hard after you, to love you, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. God, this morning we celebrate. But Lord, in our celebration, would you direct our eyes and direct our commitments and direct your church forward to what's next in Jesus name amen what's described here in Acts chapter 2 verses 42 through 47 is what I call a, a gospel community that is a catalyst for life change now when we say gospel we're referring to the glorious good news that Jesus died for our sins on the cross that he was buried and that he rose in victory over death hell and the grave so when we say the gospel that's we're, we're summing that all up right there so what we have here is a gospel community that's impacting and seeing life change all across their community. And so the mission of Cross Point, if we were to say, why do we exist? The mission of Cross Point Baptist Church is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. So for whatever our thoughts or ideas may be about church, that's it. That's it, is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. And so our vision then is to be a multi-generational church making disciples of the next generation. At Cross Point, we celebrated our 20th year, our 20th birthday earlier this year. And so at 20, we have five generations that are represented in our church family. We believe that is gloriously beautiful because we believe that's a reflection of heaven, and we also believe it's a reflection of our community. And so that, that ought to be, there ought to be a reflection in that. And so when I close my eyes and I, I picture just the life of Cross Point, a multi-generational church making disciples of the next generation. So our strategy, how do we do that? Well, we want to see everybody in the large group of worship. So good job. Proud of you this morning, right? We want to see you in the large group of worship. We want to see everybody in a small group that we call community groups. Okay, that's where we break down small group Bible studies. We call them community groups. 
You're going to hear more about that throughout the month of August, as August is our uh, month that we focus on connecting you through our group link event and that kind of thing. But we'll talk about that next month. And then to give, to give, to give of our time and our talents in terms of leveraging our lives to serve and lead in ministry, but also to give of our treasures, to give financially, to underwrite, and to support the work of ministry that goes on. And so gospel-focused churches are not simply churches that do good things. Rather, they are churches that focus stubbornly on the gospel's ability to change people. Gospel-centered and focused churches are more than just a group of people that believe Christianity is right or is a good choice or offers a better way to live. Rather, gospel-focused church, focused churches are communities who hold unwavering to the conviction that God can and will radically change lives, families, communities, and nations. So listen, there's lots that we can do. There's lots that has been done over the past year, and there's lots that will happen in the days and weeks that lie ahead. There's lots that we can do in programs and activities and events. But there is one thing that we have to do. One thing we have to do, and that is to make disciples. That is to lead men, women, boys, and girls into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ, to help them come to saving faith in Christ, and then to walk out that relationship in such a way that they love God more and love their neighbors more, because that really is the definition of spiritual maturity according to Jesus. So gospel-centered churches will be, con will be firmly committed to an unwavering love and commitment to Jesus as Lord but also an unwavering compassion and commitment to people. I mean, the church is in the people business. And people are people, right? Y'all know those, those kind of people, the ones that get on your nerves? The ones that don't drive like you? The ones that don't shop like you? The ones that don't vote like you? The ones that don't cheer for the right team? Like you? I was trying to figure out which one of all these Auburn people to give the hardest time to this morning. All of that pales. None of it matters. We're in the people, we're in the business of loving Jesus and loving people. So this morning, there is a double gaggle of kids and so in kids' ministry. And so this morning, uh, we extended, expanded. Our kids' ministry programming on Sunday mornings expanded. And so birth through fifth grade all morning long. And so for those that are serving this morning, I've prayed for them this morning. Every Sunday morning, a part of my prayer time, I pray over the name of all the men and women and students that are serving in kids' ministry. And to those of you that will be in those roles in the weeks ahead, God bless you. Thank you. Student ministry. Um, like Kim, she said earlier, I, as a parent, I have three boys in the student ministry. So I'm, I'm doing everything I can to fully support your student, our student ministry, all right? But uh, three teenagers, and I'm grateful to God for it. And so uh, tonight, today, our student ministry's weekly gathering is on Sunday nights. And so if you're new to Cross Point, you're trying to figure out how to get your teenagers, your students connected, Sunday nights, 6 o'clock, in the student uh, space. All you have to do is show up on Sunday night. There's signage, there's greeters. We'll get you everywhere you need to be. But that kicks off tonight, right? So uh, you need to have them here tonight, 6 o'clock, all right? So all, all of those kind of things happen. So when we look here in verses 44 and 45, what it said? It said, now all the believers were together and held all things in common. I said we're in the business of people, right? Loving Jesus and loving people. So it comes down to relationships. Here's the first truth for you. Relationships build community. Relationships build community. Notice that there's an identification. It says that, they all, that all who belonged were together. They belong to a community faith. The local church is central to God's mission. So if you find yourself out of fellowship with God, you'll begin to eventually find yourself out of relationship and friendship and fellowship with other Christians. But it works in the other direction as well. If you spend time with other believers and with other Christians and you, you live life with them, those relationships will help draw you closer to God. So it speaks of uses the word fellowship here uh, in, in, in the text. There in verse 42, it says, and they were committed to the fellowship. The word literally means to share in common, to share something together. 
Now, every time this word fellowship is used in the New Testament, it denotes some kind of sharing. Either sharing something with someone or sharing in something else that someone has experienced, right? I'm either sharing with you what's going on in my life or I'm sharing in what's going on in your life with you. I just the essence of being in those community groups to being in those small groups. And so relationships build community. But then relationships facilitate mission. Our mission, right, is what? Lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Relationships facilitate this mission. Relationships are the vehicle to move the gospel and the love of Jesus to others because relationships focus our efforts. Think about it like this. If we say we want to reach our community, the word community just refers to a whole bunch of people out there, right? But when I have friendships and relationships with certain specific individuals, now I'm focusing my efforts of, oh, yeah, I want to be a blessing. I want to touch. I want to help reach him or her, right? So relationships help to facilitate that mission by focusing our efforts, and they create ministry opportunities. Ministry requires getting involved in people's lives. We cannot minister the love and the grace and the gospel of Jesus from a distance. You cannot sling grace. It has to be ministered hands-on. And so intentional relationships say this to people. You matter. I care for you. You matter. I care for you. So as a church, what we want the world and the community around us to hear is they matter. Why? Because they were created in God's image. They are an image bearer of, of, of the creator. We want them to hear you matter. You matter to God and you matter to us. We care. We care about you by name and by story. And so let me invite um, Jason and Tom and Christina, if you guys will come this way for me, and if you'll just join me here on this side of the, uh, of the platform. And Jason, if you'll grab that microphone on your way up. Jason is a tall drink of water. <clears throat> so listen to me. Serving in the fields of ministry has a unifying effect on people. Because your heart follows your treasures. And we want to spotlight a few of these opportunities because part of what we want to do today is to celebrate what God has done, but begin to look forward and begin to move into those lanes of serving. And so, Jason, I'm going to ask you if you would come share. Jason Beck is with the Rescue Mission of Middle Georgia, uh, Men's and Women's Recovery Ministry right here in Macon. Uh, grateful to God for all they do. And church, let me say this. Uh, through your faithful generosity, we're able to be partnering, supporting partners with, with all of these ministries. So what you're hearing today, um, you're, you are a part of making happen. So Jason, thank you. Hey, hey, Cross Point. Is this on? Is it on? Oh, so, uh, man, what an awesome honor it is to be here this morning. Uh, I've missed so many of you, so many familiar faces, so many new faces. So our mission at the Rescue Mission in Middle Georgia is providing a pathway of hope uh, redemption and empowerment through Jesus Christ, you know, and what we feel is we we do that through relationships. It's amazing. I love this sermon, um, and how we do that is we want to uh, provide a place of safety, a, pr a place of trust where trust can be developed because a lot of people coming into the place, you know, they, they struggle with trust issues, of course, right? We've all been hurt through relationships. Isn't that crazy? Uh, we believe that all emotional and spiritual healing comes through relationships. And unfortunately, it's the one thing that we've experienced the most pain in our life, right? It, it's crazy. But when we don't heal and we don't trust the process of transformation or, you know, God's grace through, you know, through these relationships uh, with, with people that he puts in our life, we get stuck in the one thing that's killing us, and it's our sin. You know, so what we, we, we try to focus with focus at the rescue mission is is really trying to, to provide a place that's so safe that the absolute worst thing about me can be known and I'm not loved less for the telling of it, but I'm actually loved more. And so, you know, we believe that grace is not some theological thing, some word that you throw out there, that it's actually an experience, something that we get to live in. And, you know, so that's our hope. Right now, you know, uh, when, when I went to Cross Point three years ago, we had 36 men 
at the, in the recovery program. We had the ability to only house seven women long-term in, in a recovery program, right? And so now I moved to Macon. Matter of fact, I didn't move to Macon. You, you sent me to Macon. You know, God changed my life at this church radically. Jesus Christ radically changed my life. And the love and the support, the encouragement that you gave me, you sent me to Macon to be at the rescue mission in Middle Georgia. And I just love you so much for that. And so now, right now, today, we have 103 men at the rescue mission in Middle Georgia. We have 30, yeah, amen. Praise God. We've got 30 women plus 14 children, you know. And so, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so a lot of times the, the word recovery will be thrown out. You know, and, and a lot of people's faces will be like, you know, well, they're not talking to me because I don't have an issue with drugs. Look, drugs is not the issue. Drugs, alcohol is never the issue. That is a symptom of what is going on. And a matter of fact, if you want to think of it a little differently, we are all in recovery. Each and every one of us are recovering with, from a life without Jesus Christ. That's the reality. And uh, I just, I love you guys, and I thank you so much, Mike, Pastor Michael, for allowing me the opportunity to come. So thank you. Thank y'all. Hey, Jason, and, yep, go ahead. Tom, Tom, all of these partners will have, I have table space in the lobby. And so I want to speak uh, real quick on this. First of all, I would say to the men in the room, if you are looking for a place to help make a difference where you can volunteer to serve in discipleship, and other needs it'll take you 25 minutes from here to to the campus in in Macon all right um, and I'm being generous on that you can make it faster than that but <laughs> but you can get there quickly all right I want you to go talk to Jason I want you to go talk to Jason and say hey how how can I get involved how can the men in my community group how can we be involved in that and so community group leaders another opportunity for you to step out uh, and, and lead your, fan, your, your, your community group to get engaged. So see Jason. And Tom Mobley with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. We love FCA here at Cross Point. Grateful for them. I want you to hear the opportunity with them. Okay. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. Um, one of our best programs that we've gotten going on here in the last three or four years is the character coach prop? Uh, it's a character coach program. It's much like a chaplain. We train you. Uh, you fill out uh, an MLA, a ministry leadership application. We place you on a team. Uh, it becomes an opportunity for you to serve, to be a presence, to build relationships, and to see lives changed. Okay. Uh, I met a man I'd never met before. Trained him. He got his MLA filled out for me. It's been about a year ago. And we're ready to go. I've got a coach, I've got a team, and we're ready to place him. And the coach winds up getting COVID. Says, uh, and, and the character coach, the future character coach says, I have to tell him, I said, it's going to take a couple of weeks before we're able to introduce you to the coach and get you going. Well, my wife had gotten COVID during the summer, so we postponed our vacation. We're on into late August, early September. Character coach texts me and says, Tom, I'm ready to meet coach. I said, uh, I said, well, I'm on vacation. I'll be back on Monday. Character coach says, well, I know the assistant principal at the school. Maybe I'll get him to introduce me to coach. And I said, you go for it, but I'll be back on Monday and I'll check on you. On Monday, I, I called him. I said, are you ready to go down and meet coach? He said, oh, I already met coach. Assistant principal introduced me on Wednesday. I spoke to the team on Thursday. I rode the bus to the game with them on Friday. Okay, when are you gonna when are you gonna be back down there with the team? I'd like to come see you. He said I'll be back down there Thursday. I'm speaking again to the team on Thursday. So I show up on Thursday. Character coach has the trainer and the water girls on the football team gathered up, knows their name, building a relationship with them, getting to know them. The team comes off the sideline. He he begins to high five and call every one of them by name. He knows the coach. I see the coach. Coach goes, thank you so much for sending Trevor McCullough. <laughs> to Westfield football. 
I'm telling you, building relationships, being a presence, no agenda. You're not promised to get a hat. You're not promised to get a shirt. You're not promised to speak to the team, but you're building relationships. Got a guy with Perry Cross Country. The cross country team, he told me the cross country team doesn't even know he's with FCA or he's the character coach. They just think he's an assistant coach. He goes running with them. But you know what he does? He shares Jesus with them. He invites them to his church. And guess what? Two of the kids of somebody involved with the team got baptized this summer. They got saved and asked Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. God's created you. He may have given you a love for sport and a love for Jesus or a lo just a love for young people. You don't have to be an expert on any sport, mm -hmm. but we would love to connect you with a team so that you can build relationships and we can see the kingdom grow. And we appreciate Cross Point and how much uh, Pastor Michael and Pastor Trevor mean to us. Y'all are a blessing and we thank you so much. I need to improve my game, and if they'll just think I'm there as a part of the team, then that'll be good, right? Big off tape. <laughs> I don't care. Just find me a team, and so uh, start my own golf team, right? Here's the thing. You say, I don't know if I could do that. Uh, Tom, uh, four years, did this role in, in FCA in Central Florida. My best volunteers were non-ministers. What's, what's expected? Can you get by practice once or twice a week for 15 minutes? Can you show up for 10% of the home games or home matches of the team? Not asking you to be there all day. Just be a, present in, be a presence in their life and be available, right? You don't, you're not coaching anything because you can't. Can you just love on people? That's really what this boils down to. And so you don't have to know anything about sports. If you just be willing to use your time to love on a coach, and encourage a team, I want you to stop and see Tom and Vicki at the FCA table this morning and just learn a little more.
are a land of plenty surrounded by a world of need and the opportunities that, that lie in there. Now, here's the, here's the temptation for you to think, oh, that's for somebody else. No. Care and Solutions has opportunities for ladies in our church to serve as liaisons to the ladies, the, to the moms that are being ministered through in that organization, right? Just a heart of compassion that says, you matter, I care. And so we pick up and we move, and we move from there. Um, I'm going to plead with you. Make the, make the effort to stop and just keep the conversation going with all three of these partners this morning before you leave. It may be for you. It may be for your group. It may be for the person in your life that you know or that you're going to know that you're going to need to help connect them to these ministries. Okay, so let's let's just be faithful in all of that um, and help to help to touch lives. Hey, in November this year, we're sending a mission team to Valdosta uh, through our partnership with the North American Mission Board. Uh, it's called Send Relief. So we'll be working with uh, refugees uh, that are being located there. And as of this morning, there are two spots available on the team for men, males. Now when I say men, you can be teenager, okay? Uh, but two spots still left on the team, and so if you are interested in that, you can see where to drop an email, or if you'll just catch uh, one of us after the service and we'll get you information, you can take a connection card in the seat back in front of you, write your name, your phone number, your email, make certain we got it, and write Valdosta if you're the man that wants to get in that, and you can drop that in the bucket. All of those ways will help us get you connected, okay? So, coming up on that. I told you I w had the opportunity to be in Boston this, uh, for a couple of days this week. Never been to Boston before. It was like walking through an American history book. Uh, I mean, you walk around every corner, somebody did something or signed something or sacrificed their life for our nation every time you turn around in Boston. It's incredible, right? Five years ago, Crosspoint walked into a partnership with uh, Christ Church, uh, who the planter is J.D. Mangrum, and uh, they've been there five years now. And so over the last several months, I've had a few um, folks that have, uh, we've been walking through this thing together, praying, Lord, Lord, what do you want us to do? How do we, how do we walk this thing forward? What do we do next? Who are we looking at there? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> what do we do next? How do we figure out when we take on another church plant? Where should that church plant be? You know, what does next look like? And those are exciting questions, but sometimes they're a little overwhelming. Because here's, how, here's my problem. I want to help everybody. You know, like I want to help every church planter with everything that they have need of. So here's the principle it comes back to. Do for one what you wish you could do for everybody. And so we uh, prayed through this, talked through it, began to bet out things and opportunities when it comes to church planting. And here's where we fall down. As a church for Cross Point Baptist Church, you may be here this morning and didn't even know that we support and partner with a church plant in Boston. So welcome, welcome to Cross Point. Um, we have a church plant partner. We have a, a we birthed a baby church and are helped to birth one in Boston. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to recommit to Boston. So rather than a kind of a shotgun approach all over the place, let's make a long-term commitment in one spot so that we can see effective change over time. We can see the darkness pushed back we can see life transformation that happens, and we can really drill down and make it happen in that regard. <clears throat> and so Christ Church, who is our partner there, we are going to walk in through, that, through with them, and we're going to pick up their goals, and here's what that means for Crosspoint. By the year 2030, Lord willing, Crosspoint will have not one, but four church plant partners in Boston. And how are we going to do that? Well, we've laid out a strategy whereby every three years, based on faithful generosity, we take on a, the next partnership, okay? So we have one in Christchurch. January 2023, we will add our second church plant partnership in Boston, okay? And so that'll be two that we're supporting, two that we're helping make happen. And I had the privilege, J.D. connected me, uh, and I, I, I got to meet and hang out with potential church planters this week. Uh, incredible work that God's doing through all of them. I'm back to that struggle of trying to figure out how to tell Wes, we got to help them all. 
<laughs> but anyhow, so Christ Church has a goal that by 2020, they would have seven church plants in their zones around the city of Boston. That's their goal, is seven church plants by 2030. And so Cross Point's commitment to that would be that we would be a supporting church of four of those by 2020. Here's how they look at it. When a church grows to the, in Boston to about 50 people, the church looks around at each other and goes, hey, we're a church. When a church gets to about 100 people, the community looks at it and goes, hey, they're not a cult. <laughs> Worship gatherings in that community and that culture a, a regular commitment to a worship gathering meaning having church Can makes it considered legit like the community looks at it and says okay. They're here. They're not leaving The difference between getting started and getting to those checkpoints of 50 people and hundred people when you're trying to plant in a post Christian culture the difference between starting and getting there is people and equipment people and financial resources and they both require time it takes time to meet and connect and develop relationships when you move into a whole new place that you didn't know anybody it takes time we want to help take the the pressure off of those church planters so that they can make wise decisions about how to develop relationships and move forward rather than feeling like they're under the gun if they got to get it done in six months or I got to move back so it takes time and it takes money. So Cross Point ta is taking the responsibility of extending their runway, right, to give them more on-ramp time to get to healthy wisely and helpfully. We want them to get to 50 and have done it wisely. We want them to get there and be healthy as a church. We want them to have the time and the resources. So we're committing into that. So we make 10-year commitments with a church plant and on a rotation, rotational basis through that 10 years, we will add a new church plant to our partnership every four years, meaning that at any given time, Cross Point will have three or four church plant partners in greater Boston. Got one person really excited about it. <laughs> August the 27th, so I'm going to walk through a few things here for us as a church right here on the local ground. August 27th is our evangelism emphasis weekend, right? We're hosting E3 partners here on Saturday, August the 27th. I'm asking you to give us a commitment from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. to be trained and equipped on how to have a gospel conversation with people. If you know how to share the gospel, great, come be encouraged. If you say, man, I really, I've never really done that. I don't really know how to talk to people about my faith and this kind of thing. It's for you. Come. You can scan on that QR code. It'll sign you up and register. You can find it in all the other places, online, social media, website, that kind of thing. All right? But it's coming. In the month of August, you, we're going to challenge us as a church to prayer walk. And I first thought, hey, let's have some prayer walk in the areas that we, because we're going to learn how to share the gospel, and then we're going to go share the gospel, right? It's useless to learn how to and then not practice it. So we've identified some areas, some neighborhoods, some place, spots in our community that on a Saturday afternoon, we know we can engage and connect with people. And so we're going to prayer walk those areas for the three weeks leading up to this weekend. Here's how it's going to happen. If you'll sign up, we're going to, excuse me, you this week in the, in the source, the weekly e newsletter, there'll be a link where you can sign up for these prayer walks, all right? And instead of trying to get everybody to have to come on a certain day, we're just going to ask you on your time, we're going to give you the, 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 the spot to go pray, and we're going to give you specific prayer points, and so you can drive through, walk through, but let's pray for three weeks. Does that make sense? All right, so we're going to ask you to sign up to, to come to the training on the 27th, but I'm also going to ask you to commit to be a prayer partner, and we're going to communicate back to you where to go pray and specifically how to pray. Okay? So it's coming. Hey, September the 9th is a Friday. And um, through our partnership with FCA and to coaches, and if you're a coach in a room or you're a coach watching online hear this, we love our coaches, and we're grateful for you and the role that you play. But Friday, September the 9th is the Perry Panthers home game against Veterans High School. 
All right, so if you're new to, to the Perry area, you don't know that that's a rivalry, but now you do, okay? If, I, I should probably get R. Gene Claxton to explain just how deep this thing goes, right? That Friday, that night, Cross Point will be the game night sponsor for the Perry High School football game. So you're going to have opportunities to be at the gates just welcoming people. There's going to be opportunities throughout the night. Lord willing, we will host a post-game fireworks uh, as a part of that sponsorship night. All right? So just want to say to the community, hey, we love you. Come have fun. Right? Kids ministry will get an opportunity to run out on the field behind the, the, football, behind the football team that night. Now, we know what kids should look like, right? So I know which ones of y'all should be out there. guest services. So we have, we have tremendous ministries of greeters and ushers who are so faithful and I'm grateful for Ken and Earl and their teams. But as we grow, well, we need more. They need more on the teams. And so we are revamping this under a banner called guest services, right? So greeters and ushers and to the parking lots and the cafe stops and stations around the space. And so if you say, hey, I'm ready to kind of get it plugged in and serve, I, I, I can step in. This is a great place, right? If you'll scan that QR code right there and you can commit and our team member, our team members will follow up with you and get you into the training uh, process to serve on our guest services team. Okay? The goal is to create the best environment to welcome everybody and to help everybody as they come to worship on the weekends. Super excited. Just grateful for this. We're adding, uh, we're growing. Our staff is growing. By God's grace, uh, we're adding a couple of staff members to, uh, to our team. One of those will be a full-time discipleship pastor. Uh, who will be responsible for community groups. Uh, they are an integral part uh, of, our, of our strategy. And so we'll oversee that, our assimilation ministry, and we'll also be the point contact for all of our adult ministry team leaders. So we want to provide that support to continue to develop more ministry and strengthen you as you lead. So we're in the process, we're in the front end of that. We're also growing our kids ministry staff. We're adding a the part-time director inside of kids ministry uh, and so we celebrate and rejoice rejoice in that um, you say preacher that's a lot of stuff how am I supposed to keep up with all that if you're not already receiving the weekly e-newsletter if you'll take that connection card in the seat back in front of you and put your name and your email address and in just a couple of moments, you can drop that in offering buckets. We'll make certain we get that updated. If you think you're receiving it and you're not receiving it, check your spam folder first of all, right? Make certain that uh, we're, not, we're not like going in the wrong direction in your, uh, in your super highway of your computer, all right? But it's there. Listen, it comes out every Wednesday. Don't, don't, don't ignore it. There's, there's, that's where information and all of these links, you can sign up from there. You don't have to keep up with it all today. <clears throat> and, of course, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us at Instagram. Or you can just go to crosspointferry.com and find it all right there. Look at verse 45. It says, They sold their possessions and property and distributed the proceeds to all as any had need. We become generous with our time, our talents, and our treasures. And when we put our time, our talents, and our treasures somewhere, our hearts will follow. So much opportunity. We literally, as I said, are a world of plenty surrounded, a land of plenty, excuse me, surrounded by a world of need. Oh, that Acts chapter 2, 42 through 47 would not just be a description of what was happening in the early church, but that it would continue to be the testimony of what is happening through this local church. And my prayer every Sunday is that it happens through all of the local churches in our community. So where do we go from here? Preacher, what am I supposed to do with all of this? Man, I, those are the best questions. Here it is. If you're new to Cross Point, you say, I just want to learn more. I want to learn more about this church. I've got some questions. I, I want to figure out how to get more involved, how I walk into it. We have a group called Discover Cross Point. And next Sunday is our next Discover Cross Point group. My wife and I lead it, so it's a blessed opportunity for us to get to meet all of you. 
And so if you're ready to just discover more about Crosspoint, you can scan that QR code there and you can sign up. It's the one spot on campus next week where it'll be licking good donuts, right? But anyhow, please, 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 this opportunity, I look forward to that. So there's, there's, there's a step for some of you is it's time to move forward in connecting in the life of the church. To those that are regular at Cross Point, whether it's I point because they were standing here, whether it's these mission ministry partners that we talked about, some of us need to walk out to those tables and begin to put our yes and our connections into those ministries today. Whether it's the other opportunities that I shared about, right? So today, the need is to step into the lane of worship and to step into the lane of getting connected to a community group and step into the lane of giving of our time and of our financial resources. So let's just celebrate. Let me invite our ushers, me, and if you'll bring those uh, prepared to, to pass our buckets this morning, let's celebrate. To a certain degree, it's kind of like trying to get a sip of water from a fire hydrant this morning. It's, it's a lot. But let that, let that say to you, look what God is doing, right? No real strategy, just trying to keep up with what God is doing. So let's celebrate. If you're new with us, I hope you filled out a connection card. You can drop it into buckets when they come by. If you need to get on any of those emailing lists or you want to volunteer in any of those spaces, you can put your name, put your contact information, drop it on there. If you need to be added to that weekly e-newsletter, name and address, drop it in this bucket. And if you're here to, ready to prepare to give offerings this morning, you can give here, you can give online. But let us just be faithful and let us celebrate. So I'm going to pray. These men are going to pass. I'm going to invite the rest of the worship team to find themselves into their spots and let us just celebrate our gloriously good risen Savior Jesus let us be overwhelmed with this thought he desires to use us to do his work oh my stars like we get to do these things do y'all understand that We get to be a part of seeing life change. We get to be a part of sharing the gospel and seeing people come out of darkness and into light. We get to be a part of helping people that are in a struggle to gain some traction and to move forward. We get to be a part of seeing the transformation when hope comes into a person's life and and their face is transferred from frown to smile. We get to be a part of this stuff. God in heaven, thank you, Jesus. God, thank you for salvation in Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, for men and women and young adults and students that will live their lives so that others can know. Oh, God in heaven, stir us with gratitude for what you have done, but with a passionate fervor of worship and commitment to what you desire to do. God, in Jesus' name, amen. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin
So your grace. So your grace. So free. Washes over me. You have made me new. Now life begins with you. These are my chains. I'm a prisoner. people all the time it's just a fun time to be in ministry it's a fun time to be a part of this cross point family uh, it, it's a blessing to get to see the way God moves and the way God uh, ministers through you to this community and so I'm thankful to be a part of it church family uh, don't let your desire to beat the Methodist to Shane's keep you from stopping and talking to our ministry partners and getting plugged in 
uh, somewhere if you're not already plugged in. Let's support these ministries, not just financially, but let's, let's get plugged in to these ministries and let's see life change happen through those partnerships. And if you're our guest, I just wanna encourage you, Pastor Michael and I, we're gonna be in that, that lobby out there. You'll see a guest reception area uh, as you're walking out those doors on the right. And we would love to meet with you. We've got a gift for you just to say, we're so glad that you joined us this morning. Uh, so church, I'm gonna close this in prayer. Also students, sixth through 12th grade, I want to see you tonight at 6 o'clock. Come in your pajamas. We're going to have a big breakfast, and we're going to worship the Lord together as we kick back uh, this new school year. All right, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you, and we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house this morning. God, thank you uh, for these people in this room. God, thank you for our ministry partners. And God, I just pray that you would continue to allow us to see the fruit uh, of what you're doing in this community, uh, in this nation. God, and especially in the lives of, of those we get together in this room with every week. God, we love you, and we thank you for your son, Jesus, and it's in his name we pray. Amen.